Welcome to this lecture series on environment and ecology presented by Mentors for IS in association with Bangalore IS Academy and Nama KPSC. So in this particular video, we'll actually be discussing biological or biotic interactions. Now, before we actually move on ahead with uh, our discussion regarding biological uh, interactions, uh, let us just discuss briefly about the different levels of, of, of the biosphere. I'm pretty sure we have already done this. You already have some knowledge. But just before we move on ahead with biotic or biological inter interactions, we'll just quickly go through the different levels of the biosphere. So here you should be able to see the biosphere being broken down. So you have the individual. When individuals come together, you have the population, you have the community, then you have the ecosystem, then the, you have the bio, and then finally you have the biosphere. So you have to understand that when different types of cells come together, that is when you have an individual, that is your species. So your individual will represent a particular species. The next level is population. Now, this population is a group of individuals within the same species, within the same area, which are capable of reproducing with one another. So this constitutes population. The next level is community. A community is defined as the population of two or more species within the same geographical area and within the same time period. The next level is an ecosystem. Now an ecosystem is a community along with its abiotic that is non-living components such as air and water. Then you have a biome. A biome is a large ecological area with similar climatic conditions. So this biome can have multiple ecosystems within it. Now we have all we have discussed all these things. This is nothing but summing up the different levels of biosphere. Whereas in the earlier videos we have discussed each of these levels individually. So finally, the last that is your biosphere. So the biosphere includes all living organisms along with all these spheres they interact with. That is your lithosphere, atmosphere, and biosphere. And hence I can say that when you include all the biomes, that is when you get the biosphere. So the reason I am actually discussing the different levels of biosphere is to make you understand that we have interaction between organisms. There is no sphere where you don't have interaction. It is always about interaction. So in a biosphere, when we take any ecological community, it will always consist of populations of all the different species that live together in a particular area. Hence, if populations of different species live together in a particular area at a particular time, obviously they will interact with each other. So, today we will be discussing about this biological interaction that is the effect that a pair of organisms living together in a community will have on each other. So this interaction could be intraspecific interactions that is between the same species. It could be interspecific interactions that is between different species. It could be short term like predation, pollination or this interaction could be long term like symbiosis. At the same time, the interaction may be beneficial or harmful that is depending on the different interaction. So, we will now start off with the different types of biotic or biological interactions. So, we will take them, we will discuss them one by one. So, the first is predation. Now, this is very simple. I am pretty sure everybody would have uh, witnessed predation on National Geographic channel. So, in predation, one organism, that is the predator, kills and eats another organism, that is the prey. This interaction is beneficial for the predator, but harmful for the prey. So, obviously, in this particular diagram, you should be able to see the lion being the predator and the zebra being the prey. So obviously, 
it is not beneficial for the zebra to be eaten by the lion but obviously it is also beneficial for the lion to eat the zebra in order to survive therefore when it comes to predation it is beneficial to one organism but it is not beneficial to the other organism so plus means positive means plus means it is beneficial minus means it is not beneficial so generally what happens is that predators are specialized in hunting with very good vision hearing or smell and would have also developed sharp claws and strong jaws to kill and tear the prey so predation will have a powerful selective effect on prey causing them to develop anti predator adaptations such as camouflage so you can see in this particular diagram that a zebra has stripes now one of the reason the zebra has stripes is in order to confuse the lion see obviously uh, many of these carnivores like a lion for example they are more or less color blind they are not able to distinguish the different colors as we humans are able to do so what happens is that in the grasslands when you have so many wildebeest when you have so many zebras when they are collectively moving around it will actually be difficult for the lion to identify a particular animal and target it so that is why they have actually developed these kind of stripes and these kind of colors as a camouflage similar to predation uh, i also want you to understand that very similar to predation we have something known as herbivory so this is very simple now a lion might be feeding on a zebra but a zebra is not going to feed on the lion the zebra is going to feed on producers primary producers we will refer to this kind of predation as herbivory where animals and insects feed on plants it is known as herbivory okay so <clears throat> next we'll discuss about mutualism now mutualism is a long term interaction between two or more species that is beneficial to both both the species both the organisms interacting over here it is beneficial to both so this is a kind of cooperation between two species where they are obligated to serve each other because in some cases the species may not be able to survive without the other for example you can see in this particular image over here take pollination where the pollinator gets put in the form of nectar and the plant has its pollen grains transferred for fertilization so now there is interdependence and they cannot live without this interdependence therefore it is very very essential for these species or organisms to have such uh, cooperation and interaction between them so i have also included some other examples you may just read through it by pausing the video uh some other examples if you want uh, the one which is not included here is that sometimes you can also have fungi on plant roots so the plants which are able to produce food through photosynthesis will provide the fungus with fixed carbon in the form of sugars and the fungus with its thread like structures helps in capturing more water and nutrients from the soil so this is once again mutual both are benefiting from each others relationship or cooperation therefore it is mutualism i want you to remember both the organisms or species interacting in this particular uh, uh, biological interaction they benefit from each other next we have commensalism simple when it comes to commensalism two species may have a long term interaction that is beneficial to one organism but when it comes to the other organism there is no negative effect or positive effect there is no negative effect or positive effect so here for example in this particular image over here you should be able to see a shark and you should be able to see another fish by the name remora so what happens is that remoras are these type of fishes which will attach themselves to a shark one for locomotion that is as the shark moves so if this fish attaches itself to the shark it will also be able to move along with the shark second to eat the leftover food from the shark now obviously shark is a predator in uh, marine ecosystems 
So whenever the uh, shark feeds on other uh, fishes, for example, the leftover will be consumed by these remoras. So in this particular relationship, the shark is not affected in any way. Neither is the shark benefiting from these remoras, neither is it being affected by, these, by this remora fish. So this is known as commensalism, where one is benefited, the other is neither benefited, nor is it being affected in any way. Similar are epiphytes. Now epiphytes are some plants which grow on other plants. Now it does not mean that it has to affect these plants, uh, uh, the tree on which they are growing. Okay, then we have parasitism. Now, I'm sure everybody understands uh, parasitism, also known as antagonism, and you should also be able to recognize a leech in this particular image. So, a parasitism is a relationship between two species where one organism, that is the parasite, lives on or in another organism, that is the host, causing it harm. So, in parasitism, one organism that is the parasite will live on or in another organism known as the host. Take the leech for example or I am pretty sure uh, in schools we uh, everybody would have read about cascuta. Cascuta is a parasitic plant that lives by forming connections to host plants and derives water and nutrients from the plant. So similarly we can have a leech which actually sucks blood out of other organisms in order to survive. We can have intestinal parasites, parasites in the intestines which actually consume food thereby reducing the amount of food that is available for the host. So you can have there are several different uh, uh, what do you call as interaction between various organisms where one organism is affected whereas the other organism is benefiting from this uh, negative effect on the other organism. Now the main problem when it comes to parasitism is that there are certain grey areas where it becomes difficult for us to uh, say if this falls under parasitism or not. Say for example take a mosquito. Now obviously mosquitoes do bite, mosquitoes do drink your blood. Now the problem here is that mosquitoes don't do this always. Especially male mosquitoes obviously do not bite other organisms. It is always the female mosquitoes when they have to lay eggs, when they need more nutrition, that is when they bite. So the main, uh, what do you call as nutrition for mosquitoes is not blood always. They are also able to survive on nectar, unlike some other organisms. Say for example, cascuta. Now cascuta is not able to grow roots in soil and survive. Cascuta will always feed on other uh, plants or trees. Similarly, a leech will always suck blood, but mosquitoes have other options. So that is why sometimes there is a grey area. So in some sources, uh, mosquitoes may be referred to as a parasite. In some other sources, mosquitoes may not be referred as a parasite. So there is always a grey area where it is difficult for us to uh, specifically classify if some organisms or if some kind of interactions do come under this relationship known as parasitism. Now, uh, before I actually move on ahead, I just want you to understand that there is something known as symbiosis. Obviously, everybody would have heard of symbiosis, a symbiotic relationship. Now, I am not going to separately discuss symbiotic relationship over here, even though we are discussing biological or biotic interactions. Because symbiotic relationship is nothing but a long-term biological interaction itself. So, here, mutualism, commensalism, parasitism, they all come under symbiotic relationship itself. So mutualism is also a symbiotic relationship except that both are able to benefit from each other. Commensalism is also a symbiotic relationship except that only one is benefiting the other is not benefiting neither is it being affected. Whereas parasitism is also a symbiotic relationship. Now, now leech is actually depending on somebody else. So obviously this is also a symbiotic relationship but only problem is that one is being benefited the other is being affected. Okay. Next we have amensalism. Now, amensalism is an interaction where one organism inflicts harm on another organism without receiving any benefit. I hope this is understood. One organism affects another organism, therefore the minus or the negative. Whereas the organism affecting the other organism is not going to benefit from this. Say for example, in this particular image you can say that uh, you have a large tree for example. 
the shade of the large tree will retard the growth of smaller plants along the ground because it is going to cut down the amount of sunlight that it is able to receive so the large tree is not going to benefit from this but obviously the smaller plants are going to be affected by this so this is known as amensalism there are few more other uh, examples you can just go through it any book that you are going to read it will always have more examples please do try to understand this relationship because you might always get questions where an example might be given between different organisms and the interaction between them then you will have to identify if it is mutualism if it is commensalism parasitism or amensalism so this is another example where algal blooms can actually lead to the death of many species of fish and other animals where the algae will not benefit from the death of fish but obviously the fish is being affected as it is dying okay then we have competition now competition is interaction between two organisms or two species where they compete for the same resource such as food water or it could be territory or even mates for reproduction so when it comes to competition this is a kind of interaction which may be interspecific or intraspecific meaning it could be between organisms of the same species or it could be between organisms of different species so species generally compete when the niche actually overlaps so you should be able to see in this diagram at the bottom where the lion is now competing with the hyenas for the same food now both of them are occupying the same habitat now both of them will feed on the same other organisms that is herbivores primarily so what is happening here is that there is competition between hyenas and the lions so what will happen is that if two species eat the same food and there isn't enough for both they will compete with each other and both of them will suffer a shortage of food so when it comes to competition all the organisms or both the parties in the interaction they are actually affected similarly you can have organisms of the two species fighting with each other for a suitable mate so please remember competition is always affecting negatively all the parties involved in this interaction okay finally we have neutralism now neutralism is a type of interaction where there is no net benefit or harm to either species or organism now maybe in some interspecific interactions the cost and benefits experienced by each are exactly the same where they are inhabiting the same space and using the same resources but have no adverse effect on each other but the only problem is that it is actually not clear if this kind of interaction that is neutralism is actually possible in nature where two organisms are interacting with each other where the two organisms are neither benefiting from the interaction neither are they affecting each other in any way so therefore there is no perfect example because if you do have interaction either of them should be affected in some way so in in uh, in reality if you take nature there is no perfect example it should be an ideal condition where neutralism should be able to uh, exist so i hope <clears throat> uh this particular concept that is biotic or biological interactions has been clear i want you to go through more examples if possible so that it will help you to understand this particular concept in a much more better way so this is actually uh, a table so what you can do is that you can maybe you can just uh, take a screenshot of this particular table or maybe download an uh, another image from the internet so here plus or positive means benefiting minus means being negatively affected zero means no benefit no negative effects so please do remember neutral uh, neutralism mutualism commensalism competition amensalism predation parasitism when two species or two organisms are interacting how are these two organisms that is the interacting species of organisms how are they affected it is important that you remember because it is very simple it's a straightforward concept and you may get questions from this particular concept So thank you for watching if you do have any doubts please do write to us in the comment section thank you